What's up guys, we're here, welcome back to the channel. So today I am finally bringing you my honed in, zoned in meteor build for Diablo 4 Season 3. This is my final, final version. Good morning. Uh, it's pretty early, but we're getting this video out to you guys because we spent all season so far getting this thing done and perfected to the best of my ability. So I'm going to go over everything and go over the gear, the skills, the build, how it works and all that really good stuff. Um, so yeah, let's get right into this. So Meteor. Meteor is built solely off of the Starfall Coronet because of the bonus that it's going to give us with Meteor. It's going to give us two additional um, or excuse me, three additional Meteors. But now we have a cooldown with the charges instead of it being just a spam or a mana cost, which is pretty great. So when we come in here and do this, the build is, it's very good. It's very good. You can see that we're doing like, you know, millions of damage. There's some, you know, we're averaging like half 300 to 500K, 600K on average. And then we get up into the millions. It's not incredibly high. It's like 1 1.5, 1 1.6, 1.3, 1.2. 1 you know, but the build still absolutely slaps. If my, you know, little Seneschal here will stop attacking because that can just be super annoying. Come back. So let's go over the skills, guys, and just show you what I am rocking with today, which I think... I've gone back and forth with this, but I think the build is really, really good in either way. So, Firebolt, we got two points in the Firebolt, only because we are going to go into our next um, section here for core skills. We are taking Fireball into Destructive. However, Greater Fireball is actually very, very good here because it's going to apply 10% of the burning damage that I've applied to enemies as direct damage. So, this is actually my preferred one. I was just testing Destructive, but... Greater is definitely the better option here because we're always going to be burning with Fireball as our first enchantment slot. So we're burning from there. And then with Meteor, we also deal burning damage uh, when the Meteors come down. So the fact that when we launch our Fireball, it deals 10% of all of that as direct damage is actually really nice. Because we don't, we're not necessarily a dot build. We're like a direct damage build. So just to apply even more direct damage is really good. Then we got one point into Devastation for Mana, three into Elemental Dominance, because we're always going to be casting above 50 mana, which makes us do nine times in, uh, multiplicative damage. We have 121 mana, super easy to do. We'll hardly ever go below 50 unless we're in some sort of panic and we got to spam Fireball like crazy. Um, so after that, we come down to our defensive skills. We are taking one point into Elemental Attunement. For the chance to reset this is a lucky hit chance build i do want to preface that so having a lucky hit chance here um to reset a, a defensive cooldown is pretty good three in a glass cannon um however if you don't want to use glass cannon because you feel you're too squishy because we are kind of like a glass cannon in a way you could definitely take points out of this and put it somewhere else only one point into flame shield we only need this to go not only immune for uh 2.3 seconds but it also applies burning which on top of this will help us give us even more damage. Then I'm taking teleport into shimmering teleport here. Pretty standard for um, mages or, ro or random mages. For sorcerers, this just gives us even more DR. Um, however, you could take the two points out of here and put it somewhere else. We'll talk about that in a second. Then I'm doing, of course, precision magic for more lucky hit chance. Then we got ice blades into summoned ice blades. This is gonna give us a cooldown. This is going to help our meteor cool down from 4.1 seconds down to about two seconds, which is really good. Then we got lightning spear into invoked lightning spear. This is a MVP of the build and a must have. Okay, lightning spear. The changes that came this season is that on a crit, we get increased crit chance, but then lucky or lightning spear is going to stun all of the enemies. This is so strong for us, but more importantly, it's going to be basically our only way to apply vulnerable besides our pet so this is just a constant dose of vulnerability for three seconds with just as you know vulnerability is 20 percent more damage uh, then we got one point in the line of elements and then we max mana shield for dr as well as protection as a barrier then we're going to come down to mastery we're taking all points into meteor into wizards on impact this is huge we immobilize them 
If you want to do a uh, 30% faster, you can, but the immobilize is very important here. Then we got, we're maxing out inner flames for more damage. Crippling Flames on a lucky hit to also immobilize them. This is actually a 30% chance when we're healthy, so it's huge. And then we got Devouring Blaze completely maxed because if they are immobilized, we deal 60% increased critical strike damage against a burning enemy, which all enemies are burning. Then we're coming down. This is where kind of we get into a flex between these three points and your points up here into Teleport. So one point into Fiery Surge for mana regen, one point into Endless Prior for more damage, but then Warmth is actually really, really good. Um, this just helps keep you alive. If you don't need the two points in Enhanced Teleport and Shimmering, you can put it here just to kind of max it. Um, it does make it really, really nice. However, you don't actually need these points, but Warmth is very, very strong. It, hel it just helps keep you alive. So you could take the points out of here, or if you feel like you're too squishy with Glass Cannon, drop Glass Cannon, put the points in here, and then you can put another point into Teleport just to get the cooldown. So yeah, those are the skills. Key passive is always Esu's Ferocity. We're gonna get increased uh, critical strike damage against enemies above 50% life, and then more crit chance against them when they're below life. So that is the skills, guys. Let's go check out the gear pieces here. I just wanna go over this real quick. I don't wanna make the video too long. So with the gear pieces, we have a lot of options here, but this is just what I settled on. So you do, you are required to have Starfall Coordet. This is the bread and butter of their build. This is the main thing of the build. Um, Meteor has two charges. Try to get it as close to six seconds as possible. If you can get it under eight seconds, that is the benchmark for this build just to have a pretty good uptime. Now I do want to say that this build requires a lot of cooldown. We need as much cooldown as possible. I'm still missing about 10%, or excuse me, about 15% in total cooldown because I'm missing three points there. I don't have 10, I don't have 10.3% cooldown in my amulets. And then my ring is not, uh, or excuse me, um, Talrasha's is not maxed out on cooldown. And uh, eventually if we do use X-Falls, because that is an option, uh, you'd get even more cooldown there. And then same thing here, I'm missing another 1.3% here. So we're missing like, 10 point or 12 percent cooldown which will like cut down the cooldown on this to about three seconds which then with ice blades it cuts it down to a second and a half so you're basically able to spam this non-stop but anyway starfall cornet this is the big one okay it allows our meteors to be have a cooldown we throw three of them down instead of just one or four of them now instead of just one and then the meteor enhancement which if it hits three or more, we have a 30% chance to throw an additional one. That actually becomes two. And then the enhancement in here, which on a lucky hit, which we always get another 8% chance to throw two more meteors. So our lucky hit on meteor is 69% and our lucky hit on fireball is 57%. So we should have no problem getting our lucky hit. It's just that 8% chance that really, really needs to proc. Next at our chest beat, you do have a lot of options here, guys. I go for Juggernauts. Okay, we're looking for total armor and then all DR. Okay, Juggernaut is gonna give me a flat 5300 um, armor, but my evade is increased. Your evade is typically four seconds, but now when I evade, it's seven seconds. That's okay because we do hit our cap of armor. If I take this off, right, and I use Remnants, which is definitely an option if you guys wanna do, I'm only at 54 armor, 54, 5400 armor, which isn't even halfway to the armor cap. So you are a bit squishy here. Um, I'm mainly running Juggernaut because of T100s. I just breeze right through them. We have a video down on that. I'll link it down in the description below if you guys wanna see this build in T100s. So yeah, um, but if you wanna run Remnants, then you have to sacrifice Tabalt's Will because in Tabalt's Will, you can do the same thing. You can run um, Juggernaut here. So this is a huge options flop here is doing these two. So you do Remnants, and then you swap out to bolts, and then that way you still hit your armor cap and you um, can get four additional ranks in meter, which puts it to 15, which makes it incredibly strong. Um, however, you do sacrifice the points uh, and damage from to bolts. You get a flat 20% damage and then 40% more damage while you're unstoppable. So I prefer to have Tabalts. I think this just works out. Remnants isn't exactly required for the build. We're more of a medium range build. We wanna kind of throw our fireballs and then drop our meteors. We kind of wanna just throw these, 
right drop our meteors and just kind of stay back we're not trying to be super close to pull them but yeah that that's just that's just what i would i would do in my opinion i would keep it like this but you do have that option of uh swapping those things out into the gloves gloves the illuminator fireball now bounces and deals a little bit less damage on each of the explosions but this is super strong um, if you don't want to run fireball because you're set on doing using firewall which is in fact weaker then you can swap these out for um shattered stars and have gauntlets like this which is really good but i prefer this this is fireball it just makes the build play so much easier uh in our pants again we got to bolts and then in our boots we're running esus for the increased critical strike chance so our critical strike chance is 44 percent if I dash, it's 66%. We are basically critting nonstop. It's super strong. If you don't want to run Esus, which is fine, you can also run boots like this where you do movement speed, ranks of teleport. Um, you would look for mana cool or mana cost reduction and then um, like ranks in like teleport or not teleport, but teleport and uh, like Frost Nova. So there is some other boots that I have that look like that. You can come in and use some of these boots here uh, under gear. So boots like this, Frost Nova and Ice Armor, or you can do movement speed, mana cost reduction, ranks and teleport, and then uh, a resistance if you need to cap it. Anything like that is good. Then we got uh, Conceited here. All right, we got Conceited. This is good. We always have a barrier, so we get the flat damage boost. And then I'm doing uh, Ancient Flame. After many, many testing between Ancient Flame control right we got we i even have one here with control as well as a few other ones that i think would be cool like elementalist we don't necessarily need elementalist take ancient flame the increased attack speed just makes the build feel so much better now i do need to mention that the increased attack speed does not change how fast meteors fall okay just we had some questions about this just Keep in mind that's just not how that works they fall at their speed unless you change the passive node on it um in our uh ring i have storm swell this is super strong just flat damage we're gonna get this always we always have a barrier and we always make them vulnerable between lightning spear and our seneschal so super easy choice there then of course sal rasha okay we get all the increased damage we got ice fire and then lightning between um teleport and lightning spear and then three curses absolutely needed here and i would also tell you to get the three ranks in devouring blaze if you can get three ranks in mastery skills that's good too ideally i would want movement speed increase the mastery devouring blaze and then you would replace the defensive um skills with the 10 percent cooldown which just makes this so much better so much better like uh let's see i thought i had one so this one only has 6.3 percent cooldown but just to show you that we're at 4.1 now we go to 3.82. If that's 10%, it goes down to 3.6. So it's uh, it's kind of in like a no-brainer to just reduce all that, right? Um, now, one other thing I am trying to test, guys, and I will make an update video if I need to. I am going to replace Storm Swell with Starless Skies when I get it. Okay, Starless Skies is not only going to give me crit strike chance, crit strike damage, lucky hit. We will lose resource gen, but... We do get a flat 40% increased attack damage um, as well as 40% reduced mana cost because of the ability on Starless Skies. So it acts as like another Tabalt's Will where we get a 40% multiplicative damage. I think Starless Skies here with Talrashas is, is really is what's going to make this build kind of go to that next tier up, I think. I just need to test it. However, you do have a swap here. If you don't want to use Storm Swell, you can 100% do um, Tabalts, or excuse me, uh, X-Falls. You can 100% do this if you want. I just don't think it's good. You're only benefiting from this for the active cooldown. Because if we put uh, X-Falls on, our cooldown goes down to 3.78. And then again, if we were to just even just 6% cooldown on this amulet, we go down to 3.53. It's just, it's just a no-brainer when you have the cooldown aspects there. Um, but if you want to use this for the cooldown you can the lucky hit chance for our burning stuff to erupt it is going to be very marginal it's not going to be you know huge bursts of damage because we're only dealing 
a small amount of actual burning damage. Um, I think X Falls would work better with Firewall, in my opinion, but you do have this option. I have tested it, it is fine. You know, the damage numbers are a little bit lower, but it is okay. So the guys, that's the gear. I'm not gonna go in too in depth over the Seneschal and just why my picks are here, but Flash of Adrenaline is gonna be just straight damage. Uh, then Duration makes it last longer. It reduces the cooldown with Tactical. And then Initiative is just gonna have the um, Seneschal teleport to me if we get out of the way. Tempest is pretty strong here. It just sends an electrocution, basically like chain lightning to everything. Um, resource support, every time it hits, I gain 16 resource, which is really good. Then we got Fortify, which gives me a nice little shield, helps me stay alive. And then we got Mockery, which basically taunts the monsters to hit my Seneschal instead of me, which just kind of helps. So yeah, that is the uh, gear, guys. So let's go over quickly over the Paragon board and just why the choices that I made. This board took a long time to kind of put together and do. So I'm just gonna go over the notes. We have seven glyphs here. All right, so um, we're kind of cutting it thin on a lot of things, but I think this is uh, pretty good. So we're gonna have Elementalist for more damage. We're taking Pyromatic for more damage. We're taking Flame Feeder for more damage. We're taking Destruction for more damage. And we're taking Enchanter for even more non um, physical damage. Non physical damage is a huge multiplier for Sorks. Then we're taking Reinforce for more damage DR while we have a barrier, which is always. And then my last choice, you have really have a flex spot here. I like Territorial. Um, you can also swap in Exploit. You can also swap in Tactician. These three, you can kind of just go through. It's just kind of whichever one, you know, that you would prefer. So I'm not running control. You can run this. Um, it's okay. <clears throat> but control is um, control is solid, so you could do control. Exploit, Tactician, Territorial. I am not running Adept. Okay, I'm not running Adept. You don't need it. The build already does an insane amount of damage. However, if you do want to run Adept because you are set on that, you could replace Enchanter if you wish, um, or you could replace, where is my other Intelligence one? Um, you could replace Elementalist, but Elementalist is, you just need, this one is just better. It's an extra 15% increased flat damage. So if you are gonna replace it by using the board, I would just replace Enchanter. Um, you get the extra 5% resistances in your enchantment slot, which is just fire. But if you want to put a depth on, you definitely can. I would slot it right here in this board for even more mastery skill damage. Um, you know, it, it is going to help. The damage numbers just are not going to feel in, in, like a lot different. They're just not going to feel a little bit different. You're going to see a little bit more consistency in like the towards the 600,000 instead of like 500,000, but all in all, I'd rather use, I'd just rather use Enchanter because the flat damage not only is just better, but then we get even more damage for Fireball. So that's just what I would do there. But yeah, in the Paragon board, the link to all this will be down in the description below guys, but this board took a while to get together. So yeah. I feel like the build is in a really good spot. I, again, I think Starless Skies is really what's going to take it over the top. But uh, yeah, not to have this build go too long. Um, we have our defenses cap, almost 12k life, which is super good. And then 10k attack power, which is just fine. Um, I was kind of hoping that Meteors would be so much stronger. And I think it will with Starless Skies. So I'll give an update to that when I actually can do it. But otherwise, we are all done with Meteors, guys. Fireball Meteor, the build is super powerful, super strong. Go check out the T100 build guide or the, the run that we did with it because everybody is always curious about, hey, does this, can this do T100? I got a video on the channel. I'll also link it down in the description below. So like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.